Good morning, everyone. You caught us chatting. Welcome to Trail Talk. I know. I hope you have a cup of coffee in your hand. We're a little earlier than usual in the day, but I'm very excited to introduce uh, our special guest this morning, Jana Oakman. Jana, welcome to Trail Talk. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so really glad that you could be here. So if Jana looks a little familiar, you may have seen her in the newspaper or online because she was very recently awarded the Chisholm Trail Arts Council Educator Award <laughs> at the Duncan Area Arts Hall of Fame, which was a fabulous evening. Wasn't that just I was blown away? Oh. I really was. The entertainment, the the speakers, everybody. It was wonderful. It really was. It was such a great time. So mark your calendar, guys. Next year, you need to come and just be blown away, blown away. But um, so you you were presented with the Educator Award. That um, leads me to think that perhaps you teach art. Would that be... Right, that would be correct. Um, so tell tell us about your journey, Jana. How did you um, go from little girl Jana <clears throat> to becoming an art teacher? What what did that kind of look like? I would have to say, little girl Jana um, started off actually 4-H. Oh. 4-H was mm -hmm. where I really started getting interested in putting things together. Like you know, it was a lot of crafts and things, not maybe drawing, but just crafts and. Um, different things. My mother, uh, she used to make my doll dresses and sew. That was very interesting. My dad even did a lot of things. He was a carpenter when I was growing up and he was always building something. He made my water skis. I was competition water skier and he made my skis. Wow. Um, so there was a lot of, um, <clears throat> of things in the family that I saw. Creativity. You were surrounded by that, it sounds like. And Mrs. Davis, when I was in 4-H, she encouraged me to do demonstrations and and do a lot of crafts and things. Mm -hmm. And then it led to high school and I fell in love with my high school art teacher. And pardon me, I'm 66. I can't remember my art teacher's name right now. If you'd exactly. asked me last night no. at two o'clock in the morning. Right, like was right. Yeah. <laughs> no offense or anything personal art teacher. <laughs> She's probably gone by now, I think. But um, then it just kind of led into kind of a have to thing, resourcefulness. I was in uh, going to I was OSU, um, I was married at that time to, um, I was staying home. He was going to college. We didn't have the money. So I started making dolls and making um, things and selling them rag dolls. I remember selling raggedy hand dolls and candy oh. dolls. Then when I moved back to the Duncan area, my Aunt Sue and I started making Santa Clauses oh. um, out of paper mache. Mm -hmm. And that was really fun. We taught all our kids how to do it. And uh, we did that every day after school, starting in November till uh, Christmas, and we had gifts. And I was teaching elementary at the time, mm -hmm. and I noticed my third graders were drawing better than I was, uh -huh. because I could do the crafts, but I wasn't exactly able to draw and do some things. So that's when I told my aunt that I made Santa Clauses with, I said, Sue, we need to take some drawing classes. Is this... This is my Aunt Sue here today with us. We are so privileged today to have Jana's Aunt Sue Wheeler here as a live guest. We don't always have live guests. <laughs> so we're so glad you could be here. Sorry, she's not on camera, but we're, she's here. I promise. That's because she's my moral support, my mental support, um, my partner in crime. She knows where all the bodies are buried. Huh? So uh, anyway, she's, she also helps me in my studio. Oh, nice. But she and I started drawing and then we started painting and we just kind of went through this venture together. Wait, so you just like self-taught kind of drawing Basically, and yeah. painting? Okay. Well, no, Jennifer Style. Jennifer <laughs> Style. Okay. Pastels, we were doing pastels at that time. Jennifer owns um, Cedar Cedar Cut. Cedar what? Cedar Street. Uh, Cedar, Cedar Road. Road. You yeah. Street Street. You got half. I got half. Maybe we both have need more coffee this morning. Jennifer owns Cedar Co. And she's back at it. Yes, I talked to her. I saw her at the Hall of Fame. So very excited for that. Um, that's good news that she's able to get back at things. So, exactly. so she, you went to uh, her mm -hmm. and she gave you some lessons. Mm -hmm. She gave me not only lessons, but the courage to start doing things that was out of my box as oh, far no. as art and things. Mm -hmm. So I went from doing paper mache Santas to actually Christmas is just a, a big thing for me. And Santa Clauses have always been um, 
very intriguing to me, old world Santas. Mm -hmm. So Sue and I started doing the old world Santas and things, and that led into when I was going to college when I was 30 years old um, to become a teacher to, um, I even did some demonstrations and things with my old world Santas in my art classes. Oh. Um, Wait, so you, at that time. you went to uh, become an art teacher? No, actually I went to become an elementary teacher. Oh, okay. So that, so this was, um, I was, you, 30. You that's when you started teaching elementary school and realized that your third graders were drawing. Okay. And then you okay. Um, actually it started when I was in first grade, uh, teaching first grade. I noticed my daughter had some extreme uh talents in art. She was in my first grade class and we did a bulletin board and I was looking at her art compared to the rest of the kids, and I'm going, wow, she has a great eye for dimension. And she had a little girl on a swing and her legs were swinging back and making those swooping. And it was just like, I gotta, I've got to be a better artist than my first grade. I've got to learn how to do lines drawn in the sand. I got to keep <laughs> Exactly. But um, I taught I taught elementary for eight years and I kept moving up and I ended up from first grade all the way to sixth grade. And then when I was my eighth year of teaching. An opening became open at the Edge Academy mm -hmm. for an art teacher. Mm -hmm. Well, I had been called the paper mache queen by the, all the my peers and things in school, and we we did a lot of art projects. In fact, the teachers kind of sometimes would say, "Hey, you do more art than you do teaching," but I tried to incorporate it with all the other arts. You can. So I got that job. Ah. At that time, you didn't have to have a degree in uh -huh. art. Okay. That led to me going into counseling because I love the Edge Academy because the students uh, had actually more needs and the art I saw as a a way for them to um, was therapy. Mm -hmm. It's always been mm -hmm. therapy for me. It was therapy for these kids. So um, I went into counseling. I also went into educational leadership for a minute, but my love was for art. So I went to Comanche and spent my last five years in uh, teaching art to high school kids. Very good. Um, I did teach art at the, at the Edge Academy, was a counselor uh, there, but I used both of them together. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Now that led me to, Sue was there at that time. I asked uh, my principal, I said, you got to get Sue Wheeler over here, elementary teacher at Plato. She's amazing. So we kind of did this journey together as far as building my business mm -hmm. that I was going to go into after I retired. Mm -hmm. Because when she retired, I said, okay, I know you don't want to stay home. She was like, what am I going to do with myself? And I said, if you retire, I promise I'll keep you busy. So we built this business called Jana Studio. Mm -hmm. And that's what we've been doing ever since. And so um, <clears throat> what what kinds of uh, things do you do at the studio? So you're are you teaching? Yes. she still no I retired okay uh, about four years ago okay and so we had this business that we could so you're full-time in your with your studio right now and does that allow you time to make art yourself well or is the, is your outlet more through education I, this is interesting to me <clears throat> about five years ago, right before COVID, uh, started taking a watercolor class with Pat Dixon, mm -hmm. wonderful lady. Mm -hmm. uh, she moved to Texas and our group of ladies, mm -hmm. I was determined to learn watercolor because I've been in acrylic, pastels. We do um, we do everything in our studio with the kids. We try to give them a taste of all mediums because I feel like if they are going to walk into a hobby store, a Hobby Lobby or Michaels or wherever, they need to know what they like before they can purchase anything to hone in on that one thing. Right. It's a bit of an investment. It really is. is. Oh, yeah. If I teach you um, several different things to work with, and you're going to get develop a taste for that one thing that really interests you. Mm -hmm. And that one thing at that time for a long time was paper mache. Then it went into painting, acrylic painting, and now I'm into watercolor. And one of the reasons I'm into watercolor is because of Pat Dixon and this group that I work with. So now we work on Wednesdays, back to your question. Mm -hmm. Right after I leave here, my group come on Wednesdays, my buddies, my pals, we call ourselves the Art Palettes. <laughs> Watercolor <funny>. Wednesday. And <laughs> we get together, cute. Spanky Davis, Debbie Sullivan. Um, who else is in our group? Sue Robin Bannister now is there. 
Charlotte, Charlotte Midland just uh, came in, Rhonda Huff. Uh, do I believe anybody else who Wheeler? And we worked together as a group. So that's when I started getting to paint on my own and doing oh. some things. So I just recently started, I sold three pieces in that art hall thing. Oh my goodness. Color. I was surprised because I thought I'd never get it. They were very cute. Very cute. You brought in some some small pieces mm -hmm. and those that fantastic. Good for you. Um, we do mural work. Um, I've been spending a lot of time with my best friend, Sherry Trusty. She has bought some places in uh, La Paz, Mexico. Mm -hmm. So Susie's even been with me, but we've painted on uh, huge canvases that we recycle there in Mexico mm -hmm. um, and some different things for her because it's hard to um, find a lot of art in Mexico that you can, she's got two houses there. We had to decorate two homes. Oh. And art for two homes was a lot. So yeah. I've gone in and just recycled paintings, brought things from home that were small enough to put in a suitcase or whatever. So how do you recycle a painting? What do you mean? You just paint over the top of I think this in high school too. We would go to the Goodwill, uh -huh. pick up something somebody threw in there for a dollar or whatever and didn't want anymore. And I'd say, okay, make this your own. Paint over it. Paint over the whole thing if you want to. Or use that flower pot do some dimension on it, put some, we use caulking a lot. We use baby powder to thicken our paints. We use um, paper for collaging it with like a different um, textures, anything. Like mixed media. Right, mixed you make it your own. Uh -huh. And so we just uh, just do things over top of that painting. Wow, that is so cool, so interesting. I love that you're the first artist I've talked to who who didn't just, paint over something they'd already done that they didn't really like. I've talked to artists before who do that, but never uh, with this idea in mind. I have three paintings in my studio right now that I'm uh, actually doing a couple of Airbnbs myself right now. Uh, one of them with my friend Sherry, but I have a barn that we're going to do a barn dominium out of. And so I picked up some paintings and I'm thinking, okay, these are great, but the color might not be great. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to claim these as all my own. I'm, you know, they're, I'm doing somebody else's art, but I'm making it completely different. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, that's what I do. I recycle. That is such <laughs> a cool idea. I mean, and there are tons of those kinds of things that are at Goodwill or thrift stores. Oh, yeah, you were the time. And the kids loved it because they'd go find something and go, what, Miss Oakman, will this work? And I'd say, Okay, tell me what tell me about what you're thinking about it with it. Oh, I like this, but I like the colors of, you know. And that's what I try to encourage because we do a lot of paint parties. Mm -hmm. And I do birthday, we did a birthday party Sunday. And the little girl wanted to do um I lost my train of thought. What were we doing? Ice cream cones. Okay, so she sends me a picture of an ice cream cone. I don't want them to copy that ice cream cone exactly. I want it to make their ice cream cone, their flavors. I want them to do the backgrounds of their bedroom mm -hmm. or wherever they're going to hang it. Put mm -hmm. some dimension on it. So we did ice cream cones and they were all different. They were all fun. How fun. How fun. I think I went to one of your paint parties years ago. Louise Singh. Oh, we had, had so one. much fun. That was very, we painted yeah. guitars. Yes. And yes. with these little rosebuds on there. And um, it was just, yeah. I made my I made my family look at that painting for years. <laughs> I put it in a very prominent place. <laughs> well, I, I, those those paint parties are so fun. The thing I took away from that is that um, I can follow some instruction, and I can paint a picture of something. I mean, it, it really gave me confidence. Mm -hmm. Not that I've painted anything since, but I did walk out of there thinking, wow, I, <laughs> I can do this. And you were the teacher. So I have a feeling you've left a trail of confidence building behind you. I, I think that you've probably <laughs> made a lot more people than just me. You've, you've been teaching for years. Yeah, so. I feel like, um, I feel like, I've always said that I'm a better teacher than I am a painter. And that's the reason I'm just now getting the confidence after all these years mm -hmm. of doing my own thing, of putting things in um, shows and things, mm -hmm. especially gives you confidence when you sell something. Right. Um, but 
I don't know that that's just something I I feel is teaching is is, is better for me. Um, I want people to leave with confidence and knowing that they can do things. Now you said following instructions. That's mm -hmm. one thing I don't do well. If all else fails, I read the instructions. Mm -hmm. So when I get something in my hand to do, <laughs> Sue and I went to an art class one time and we were supposed to paint this little bitty acrylic painting and the teacher would just keep walking by me like, oh, Jana, you're not listening to a thing I say. I ended up with a really cute piece and that little bitty piece, I think, was probably worth five hundred dollars because it took me forever to do it. If I would have, if I had kept the money I spent in those classes, it would have right. been five hundred dollars. Right. But I'm just not good at following directions. That's why I'm saying I might take a piece and throw some texture on it and throw some paper on it or whatever. Mm -hmm. Because I just kind of color out of the box. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the line. so the instruction that I recall was um, you. You taught me how to uh, mix my paint on the canvas, um, how to uh, put shadow on one side and then the light on the other, mm -hmm. you know, for, for that. That's been a while. Yeah. Is. yeah. <laughs> um, and um, then uh, that the, the imperfection of the, you know, little whirly cues or you know whatever else we were putting on there that that was all that was all good but also how the paint uh the brush would add could add like texture or dimension uh by swirling the, and so anyway I mean those things stuck with me that's awesome yeah and that was just that you know, good. one night years ago that's with good. this brain I remembered all that <laughs> um so the one thing that you are you're talking about how you moved into watercolors. This is a, such a common thread. I'm, the viewers have heard me talk about this before. Every artist I've ever talked to, they are always pushing themselves to get out of that box. Mm -hmm. There's always something else out there. I mean, if I saw a first grader's work and I was impressed with it, I don't know if I would think. I need to be able to do better than that. You know, I don't know if I would think like that exactly. And um, so I just, I love it that those are the kinds of things that just helped you look inside and say, you know, I do have these, this in me. I have this in me and I need this outlet for it. There's never been a day in my life that I haven't had to feel like I had to create something. Mm -hmm. I, my grandson asked me the other day, my grandson's 13, and Sam said, Granny, is there ever a day that you don't do art? I said, well, you know, I don't know if it was just, I was born with it or what, but there's just, there's just something about me that has to be looking at art, has to be studying art, or has to be doing something with my hands constantly. Mm -hmm. I'm going on a trip with my middle daughter this weekend and her family to Santa Fe, and there's going to be five of us in the car, and I'm thinking, oh my gosh. What can I take for seven hours that I can do in the car that I can work on? Can I put my watercolor in a bottle and do it that way? Um, I mean, I have to be doing something right. right. It's right. Just crazy. I can't watch TV without doing something. Wow. Just, and and is it predominantly painting? Oh, I mean, no, I do. No, I make my own jewelry. Um, I do my own jewelry. I, um, gosh, we do just a little bit of everything. Sue and I, we have doll making classes. Uh, we make, we've made purses. If we see something at a, I hate to go into somebody's store and, and look, and because if they know me, they're thinking, oh, I bet she's thinking she can make that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, you know, it, it's true. I, I'm always thinking, how can I recreate something? Mm -hmm. How can I? Right. Been that way all my life. Right. Well, I know, I think that that, I mean, you really do have confidence. You always have. If you think, I oh, I can do that. I can make that. You know, you really do have that. It's just a matter of just don't ask me to give a math it. equation. Uh, Please, that's not that's no, not math's not going to work. No, yeah, no, that side of the brain does not work. Uh -huh. I have to mention too that I have another aunt, um, Doris Hunt, that lives in Oklahoma City, and she's kind of an aunt sandwich. Uh -huh. For me, she's my dad's mom's side of the family, and my aunt Sue is my dad's side of the family. 
So oh. we've worked together throughout these years. She's made painting samples for the studio for paint parties for me. Um, she comes down at least once a month and stays a week. And she's taught me how to make paper flowers out of egg cartons that are fantastic. Mm. Um, so many things that I um, I haven't thought about that she's also helping. So I've had these two aunts over here kind of pulling me both and keeping me centered. Mm -hmm. And we just kind of feed off each other. They say they learn from me. I say I learn from them, mm -hmm. but I think it's kind of a partnership that's been going on for many, many years. Right. So I got creativity from both sides of the family. So when you became an elementary school teacher, why did you want to teach? My dad was a teacher. Okay. My aunt Sue was a teacher. Um, I just didn't think there was any other thing that I just knew. Mm -hmm. no, number one thing that really I think got me was we lived out at Central High. Mm -hmm. My dad was a teacher out there and we lived that part of his salary was to live on the school grounds. We got a little apartment out there mm -hmm. condominium. So we shared this little condo thing or du duplex right. with my third grade teacher, Mrs. Paul. She knew when I took a bath, if I took a bath or not, she could hear me in there. Their bathroom's connected to our right. bathroom. So she knew if I was clean or not. And then all of the teachers out there, they just, we just were a family. Uh -huh. I didn't know anything but teachers growing up. Uh, That's it. Right. You're going to be a teacher, Janet, because you, you know, they'll call, I could call them by their first name. Uh -huh. they the principal lived uh -huh. next door. I almost burned down the superintendent's house. My brother and I, when we were burning the trash one day, and they still liked us. <laughs> Right, so they, they ran you all off. So I that that is very um, that's really interesting to think because I mean even when you're when people not everyone who becomes a teacher ought to be a teacher. Mm -hmm. You know they just they just kind of like oh, oh what what else? But obviously this was the right path for you. You know because even though you are an artist at heart I think you're you're still that teacher too there's something about passing some what you have on you know onto someone else and giving them that courage or confidence or freedom to you know to try to do the things themselves I and that leads into other parts of my life as well yeah for example I'm the the women's ministry leader for our, our Celebrate Recovery at Chisholm Hill Church of Christ. Uh -huh. So I um, I sponsor women who have been, now at Celebrate I don't want to get into an advertisement. I could because I love it. Right, right. But what we do, we have Celebrate Recovery is um, kind of like an AA or NA, but yeah, we deal with more than just um, alcoholics, drug addicts, or whatever they mm -hmm. come in for. It's all hurts, habits, and hangups. And I started this uh, eight years ago. Mm -hmm. um, I was having some issues in my family. And uh, I just thought, well, this might be really, actually, I went in to fix them, you know. But then I learned yeah. I had a lot of issues to deal with myself. But that led me into ministering. In other words, Sue and I, um, we visit the Stephen County Jail Woman Can and go in and mentor women there and, mm -hmm. and different things. So the teaching has led me to so many different paths that just that. Mm -hmm. in my gut in my heart feeling that I have got to be a mentor or I've got to be um passing on knowledge that I've learned throughout the years mm -hmm. we've done parenting classes all kinds of things not that I was the best parent in the world but because I've taken classes and I've learned right right well some I mean sometimes that's what a teacher does even as a first grade teacher you have to teach math mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and it's not your thing but you exactly. you gain the knowledge to pass that on to the, your students and so yeah sometimes the teacher is just that vessel right you're just that willing vessel that in, you bring the information in and then you you know let it come out of you to to your students or whoever uh, you know you're exactly. with um, so, but I love how you've been able to combine that part of you with your art, you know, and just make that, um, I, I mean, it seems like the perfect, the perfect path for you. Well, it's, it seems to have been working for me a bit. Yeah. That's, that's what I love to do. Yeah. So, wow. Um, that, that's great. So what's your favorite age to, um, teach? Um, <clears throat> golly. 
We have a range of students right now from our youngest one, seven. We typically don't te take them less younger than that right now, but we have a little seven-year-old that's almost aged, wonderful, uh, all the way to, um, he's, Cole's almost 16. We've had him since kindergarten. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah, he's a great wow. little artist. You probably have seen his art. At, he's wonderful. But um, I, golly, I would probably have to say that 10, 11, 12 year old mm -hmm. age. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is it different teaching adults? It is. Adults don't have confidence. They right? Don't. Yeah. Um, I remember when I taught at the Edge Academy, these high school kids would come in there and you'd have to pry their fingers off the wall to get them in the door mm -hmm. because they were scared. They'd been frightened. Okay, you take a kid. Um, my daughter, when she was in my first grade class, she got all the encouragement she wanted because here I'm encouraging her in first grade. She goes to second grade and she's getting better at art. She goes to third grade and these teachers get to keep encouraging her. But if she gets in fifth grade and that teacher's not very encouraging, doesn't say anything about her art, at some point they get to the point and say, well, you know, I'm really not as good as I thought I was. I'm not going to do that. Um, I'm better at this than that. Mm -hmm. And they go on to do their specialty things. Mm -hmm. That's the reason we have kids who, my grandson, who is, he's been encouraged all his life with sports and he thinks he's the best at all of them. Right. And right. he's going to probably keep thinking that until maybe he gets up there and he didn't get that scholarship in college. Mm -hmm. you right. Know? right. But they have to have that encouragement from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. And I tell my students, all parents all the time, keep honing on in on this talent and keep encouraging because this child really has potential in mm -hmm. this area. Mm -hmm. Or just, you know, I'll send them list home there. Hey, can you buy them this for Christmas? Right. You need to. So do you ever have um, students who are like I, I took piano lessons when I was young. Mm -hmm. And I, I practiced a lot, you know, and I, I could play and I took him for years. But at some point I realized this is so much more work. And there are other things that I know I am better at doing that I would prefer to put my work into. And I just wonder, do you ever have to help guide a student and say, you know, this this maybe is not where you are their family maybe you shouldn't be pouring all of this into them here is that ever something you have to absolutely. i mean it seems hard like that would be a really hard thing to do absolutely but um back to what you said about taking piano lessons i took piano lessons when i was younger too but something happened i i, I lost that encouragement i really i think maybe i messed up at my first piano recital i don't know and it, i lost the interest in it yeah. and i never I, music was not my thing you know it mm -hmm. could have been music if i had been more you know mm -hmm. but yes we've had to um especially but it's been more like this i have a child in here that just the parents bring them in they say oh they're so interested in art but they can't sit still mm -hmm. they can't mm -hmm. sit through that mm -hmm. and they are their art is more um oh i have to ask how i say this um it's not as mature as it should be mm -hmm. so basically what i might say is they're not, not mature as they should be at this point right to handle being in a group of kids mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so let's bring them back in a couple of years don't stop encouraging them. Right. Um, I noticed that they're more interested in dance. Mm -hmm. Maybe you should encourage that for now and keep this art on the back burner. But yet, let's come back to that sometime. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've had right. to do that. Or they could be like uh, one of my kids who is super interested in something for a little while. Mm -hmm. And then super interested in something else. Like it's the greatest thing ever for a little while, mm -hmm. you know, and then the interest is over. Exactly. And so, yeah. Well, in our, our, our classes, you know, we have some kids that we've had for several years and you begin to notice what they're really good at and what they really need to um, stay focused on. Mm -hmm. um, Cole is really good at painting and he's, I noticed lately his watercolor is coming along so well. 
Um, and I, I think that instead of trying him to get us to do the other things that the other kids are doing, like he may not need to do clay right now. Let's keep mm -hmm. him mowing and watercolor or mm -hmm. painting, you know. Mm -hmm. So do we don't push him? He's been with us for years. I'm not going to have him do some of the things that the other kids have done. They're on a different level than him. Right. So we kind of push them in the direction that they're, because I know I wish that I had a concentrated on at least one area because I feel like I'm okay at a lot of different things. I'm okay at watercolor right now. But if I'd have been doing watercolor for many years, I'd be as good as some of Barbara Nelson or uh, Lou Baggett or mm -hmm. some of these ladies in our community that are really, really good at watercolor. Right. Yeah. You know. Yeah. True. So um, when you are teaching, is do you find that it's helpful to uh, start students with one medium and move to another? one like in a certain progression because I mean I I know watercolor is very different from oil very different from pastels you know how do you or even acrylics you know we had one artist who painted acrylic well it dries so fast you know you can like layer it up in one sitting right you know where some of these others don't work like that so I when you're teaching, is there like a an order or progression that you use with children? Uh -huh. um, we always uh, in our young kids classes, we always want them to draw everything they do. We want it to be original. So um, adults, I'm not going to try to teach an adult how to paint, how to draw and paint in a mm -hmm. three-hour class. Mm -hmm. So we'll put an image on that for them. Yeah. So it's already ready. Hence to go. my guitar picture. Yes, hence my guitar picture. <laughs> um, but so we'll start off with some basic drawing and teach them how to do how we do. You know how we measure things. So Jennifer Style always talks. You know, measure things with your pencil. You know how far is this eye from that eye? Mm -hmm. Basic things. Mm -hmm. And then it depends on what we're doing. Like right now, we're getting ready for the um, the Youth Art Month right. at SeaTac. Mm -hmm. So our kids are doing uh, watercolor redbirds. So we kind of figure out how much time do we have between this show and this show. If we can do this in two weeks, we might teach this watercolor bird. Mm -hmm. um, if we have, um, we're not in between shows, then we might spend some time teaching them a, a pastel that might take them longer. Mm -hmm. So we just, you know, we'll, we'll spend a month on watercolor. Mm -hmm. And then we'll say, okay, well, let's move on to this medium. Mm -hmm. Let's move on to something else. Mm -hmm. And the kids also, too, they stir us. They'll say, oh, we want to do some clay. We want to do some clay. Uh, yeah. So we've got to, we, we say, okay, well, we'll do that. Let's mm -hmm. work on this just a little bit longer, and then let's move into clay projects. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you just kind of yeah, feel your way through there, yeah. depending on what's mm -hmm. what's coming up. You mentioned Youth Art Month. We, um, we also participate in Youth Art Month here. And... Um, What's the uh, out of over by Comanche? What's the school that always brings fame? Fame. fame? fame. I feel like they use their art just like you did when you were at the edge. Mm -hmm. And they always bring a ton of stuff. They do a lot of ceramics and things there. Um, but you know, a lot, they always bring a ton of things. And we were talking about that earlier. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about, you know. When budgets get cut, art and music are always on the chopping block first, it seems, and in public schools. And um, just the fact that you recognize that the art for a high school student, especially, or, you know, mostly high school would be in the edge or fame, um, how therapeutic it is, how it gives them it maybe it builds confidence in them Absolutely. that they can if they can do this maybe they can finish their school and, and actually get that diploma that they need you know just they're just in a different path to get there right and um just i don't know i'm just it's always a frustration to me that art is the thing that people that the people making decisions right. deem as the thing that we should mm -hmm. uh, do away with. That's a tragedy. When it, yes. it, it actually helps the whole person and the whole process, I think, of learning. Mm -hmm. 
not just art, but learning everything. And uh, you, just like you were talking about measuring, you know, learning. So you learn uh, about biology, people, you know, human or animals and measuring. So you have to know how to measure and how to read the whatever you're using to measure with and, and just all of those things. So those are all that all feeds into the other subjects, you know, and it's also can I give you an example of one at my edge? The thing about fame and the edge is, is that we've had a luxury a of getting grants and things like that. I wrote a lot right, of shirts sure. and got money, but um, I also felt like I had to, I, I'm very resourceful. You could call me a art hoarder. My house is not hoarded up, but my art studio, oh my goodness, you, Sue and I are constantly trying to organize it. Right now we're collecting lids because we're doing a lid collage. We, uh, we, you know, you have to use your resources, but that's also when you have a kid like in, um, maybe not have enough money to, one time I, while well, I was divorced, I had these three kids and I had this old couch. I'm trying to get through college because I didn't go back to college till I was 30. Mm -hmm. I was sitting there looking at that couch and going, wow, that couch is horrible. What can I, I can't afford a new couch. So I'm thinking, okay, well, I did that paper mache project and I know if I could measure, this is just a piece here and a piece there. If I go down to Walmart and I buy some off the clearance rack, some fabric, I bet I could make that couch look better. Everybody thought I had a new couch. Mm -hmm. So you're teaching kids to be resourceful, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. number one. Right. Um, the example I was going to tell you back, back to that, I use my resources in journals. We make a lot of journals and things. And we were using, um, with this one student, a old book. And we do, what do we call them, Sue? Um, uh, repurposing a book, mm -hmm. recycling mm -hmm. a book. Um, and he was doing a journal. Okay. Mm -hmm. And he was doing a great job at it, but he was also um, messed up on drugs. He had some drug issues. Mm -hmm. And he ended up being suspended from school. But I encouraged that kid, take your journal with you. Mm -hmm. This kid came back a year later. I was still at the edge, brought me this completed journal had taken this journal with him through his process of rehabilitation, mm. I just lost it. Wow. You should have seen the journal and how beautiful it was. I saw this kid the other day. He's working in a, he uh, works with uh, my sister mm -hmm. and he is in a higher position. Um, he told me that he has that journal in his little shelf and he will never let go of that journal. Wow. So not only did he use resources, he used this journal to heal himself, mm -hmm. you know, mentally through this process of getting off of drugs. And he did art. Wow. Um, it's just a beautiful process it, to me, art is. That is, wow. That is just the best story. I love that so much. And years later, after I see this kid, he remembers this and mm -hmm. uh, how mm -hmm. he healed through that process. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, that's, you, you know, you, you don't ever know as a teacher, yeah. you never know what impact this particular lesson will have on someone down the road. You just know I'm doing my best today, you know, and it, whether it's, I don't know, something, some, you know, you're meeting your past skills for the, uh, you know, requirements for Oklahoma education or you're teaching art in a studio. Right. You know, there there is something that when you pour into someone else like that, that you get to leave a little bit of you there and let and then find out. Maybe maybe you find out, maybe you don't. But you know, that's that's the beautiful thing. Yeah, and I, I you know, there's days you get up and you don't want to be there. You don't. Um, you think, oh man, I don't want to teach today or whatever. And I. But there was never a year that I, I hated. There were years that I disliked because there are students you have to learn to love. I call them the kids that me, uh, it's called extra grace require. <laughs> e yeah. G -Rs. Yes. But you, you know, that day, that may be the day that you made an impression on somebody mm -hmm. that you never know. I always say that those are the kids whose names you learn first. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Because you have to say their name. You end up saying their name That's, over and over and over. It's funny you said that because I met a girl, a lady at the grocery store. I ran in to get something for my church thing that night, and there was a lady standing there, and I said, are you Sean's mom? 
yes. And I said, how is Sean? Well, Sean was one of my, one of those pains in the uh, honey, you know? So I remembered his name and there's a lot yeah. of kids I see it on the street. I could not tell you their name. I love them, but I can't yeah, tell you their name. So funny. yes, yes. That's funny. That's <laughs> great. Well, before we get off of here, let's look at some of your pieces that oh, you brought yeah. to share with us. I mean, I love Christmas and you brought some fun Santas. So um, I've got this easel here. I'm going to get up and uh, put, I'll put this guy up here first. Mm -hmm. So tell us about this Santa. Okay, this is an acrylic. Mm -hmm. And this guy, mm -hmm. I took a picture of him on a cruise ship. Mm -hmm. Funny guy. I, uh -huh. I like to take pictures of my Santas. Um, I used to just take Santas from something that I looked at. But I don't like to, I don't copy anything anymore. I like to, I like to do art from art. Oh, I like to take a picture of it and then paint from uh -huh, it. And that's uh -huh. what I've been doing in the last few years. This guy was on a cruise ship and I said, oh my goodness, you look my, like my 2021 Santa that I haven't painted yet. And uh, I think you'd had a little bit too much to drink because I said, do you mind if I take your picture? I paint Santa's and this and that. And he goes, yeah, you want me to take my shirt off? <laughs> Please not what so I was thinking. thinking. Sometimes I put the original picture on the back. I think oh, I did that okay. one, but it's not on there. But thank goodness, because yeah. he had a shirt on. So now I know why his cheeks are like roses and his nose is like a cherry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So anyway, that's the I did of him. That's fantastic. I love it. I mean, he looks like he looks like a real person, and he doesn't want to wear snow white. That, uh -huh. that he, that's awesome. What a, I mean, I don't know what. The, the, the lightness this one I have, I have a uh, picture behind it oh okay so this is the original picture of him oh um wow Jenny really captured him I met this guy um actually Sue and I were at the Quartz Mountains and I I got this we get to we went to the Quartz Mountains for years and did a lot of different art mediums so we that's one reason so one of the reasons that I've gotten so interested in so many different things because mm -hmm. of that experience at mm -hmm. the Oklahoma Arts Fall Fest. Oh, okay. Anyway, so I met this guy there, and actually, I said, "Oh my goodness, I know you've been told a thousand times you look like Santa." He goes, "Well, actually, that's what I've done for the past few years. Is I actually get to portray Santa in some things." Oh. But he had a hat on, and I said, "Do you mind if I interview?" So I sat and talked with him, and actually, his wife, who I plan to do eventually, was. Mrs. Santa Claus, uh -huh. and she looked just like a Mrs. Santa Claus. Oh, wow. So I took his picture, and there he is, right and there. there. And well, but this is actually mixed media. Yeah, I was just realizing that. So there's this lace. Uh -huh. um, this is actually wallpaper. We've got some pom poms. If you look oh, in that the what back, we're in uh -huh. pom poms. Okay. If you look in the back, there's paper back behind it. If you get really close, you can see some of the paper. Uh -huh. But I love mixed media. And then you put some, mm -hmm. I don't know, some kind of a little bit of lace paper. there. I think there's some wallpaper texture. Say, it's, yeah, his beard is it's got it's dimension to it. Right. You can absolutely see it. Wow. That piece is so and you added glitter to it. This is that 2019 Santa. Okay. So you I think my 2021 Santa is right now. He's at the um, art show at, the, at SeaTac right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you do one Santa every year. Yes. Yes, I do. What a great. And I usually give them to the person that I couldn't, couldn't oh. find this guy. Oh. I can't remember his name. I need to call the arts council. I don't think I can get it up. Yeah. Maybe yeah. a print. Maybe a print. There you and go. And this guy was on the cruise and he was inebriated. So I right. Yeah. No way to track him down. Right. Yeah. Unless he sees this episode of Trail Talk, mm -hmm. my chance. Well, and then, if I offended you, I'm sorry for the inebriation. <laughs> and then tell us about this must be one of your famous yeah. paper mache. This one, oh, I look if there's a date on him. My son grabbed this one out of my Santa Claus closet and said, hey, mom, take this one. This is one that I had given to my mother. And it's probably, when did we start doing that? In the 1980s. Cash was uh, about six. When Sue's son was six and he's how old now? He's 34. 34. So that's how long we've been doing paper mache Santa. So this guy was one of my first ones. Mm. And uh, actually, I think there's a gourd under him. You That's what to, I was thinking. It sounded like a gourd. You can make them out of tin foil, what up, anything. I mean, yeah. I teach kids to look at a rock and see a Santa Claus because we paint them on rocks. Mm. But just anything that you can see of that. And that's for resourcefulness. You have to be able to use 
That's why I can't get in my studio right storage rooms right now because we have stuff to make everything. But wow, I'm seeing a seeing out of this painting over here. This guy over here. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah there you go, Alan Hauser. He has a Alan great. Hauser. Yeah, he has a great uh, a great face there. Do you know Duke Goddard? No, he was know. a Santa Claus for Jennifer um, Parker. Oh, okay. Brownstone okay. Oh, wow. He's yeah. the one I have at SeaTac right now, but I didn't paint him as a Santa. I painted him as a retired Santa. He's in overalls. Oh. And the reason I did that is because when he came in for me to talk to him, interview him, he had on these overalls and this old hat that he talked about that he had worn all over the country. He was in the service. Mm -hmm. I said, I can't do him as a Santa. He's a retired Santa. Right. So that's what I did. Oh, guess. what a great. So you interviewed these, um, the, your Santas. Do, One, is that is that to just help capture mm -hmm. all of every part of them? That is so awesome. I love that. So I did one about four years ago when we built our pool because one of the guys that was building our pool was in the pool putting the sides. And I said, he was interacting with my cat. And I said, oh my goodness, do you realize how much you look like Santa Claus? And he had a toboggan on and everything. And so we talked for a long time. And I said, do you mind if I take your picture and do you as a Santa? But I gave that one to him. Mm -hmm. And I don't even have a picture of it now. Mm -hmm. But so. Yeah. Wow. Well, how fun. Well, Jana, this has just been such a joy. I mean, maybe maybe you could come back and do kind of a little art lesson with us sometime. We'd oh, like I'd to. love that. Okay. 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 You guys be watching because I'm going to have you come back and, and we'll do some, some kind of an art lesson. Okay. Like I said, I think I'm a better teacher than I am artist. So, uh, well, I'll try to teach you something. Well, I can vouch for the fact that you are a good <laughs> teacher for sure. Thank well, thank you for being on Trail Talk today. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode as much as I did. I, I, I and who could, I mean, these make me smile. <laughs> who, can, I, who looks at a picture of Santa and doesn't smile? You right. have to, right? Um, thanks for joining us today. Be sure and tune in tomorrow. We're going to be on at the regular time in the afternoon as we uh, talk about uh, kind of dive into our Black History Month list. We're going to talk about um, all Black towns in Oklahoma. We've got a probably a two-week uh, lesson going on that. Anyway, uh, hope you guys have a fantastic day. This morning, Trail Talks kind of got my day off to a good start. Mm -hmm. no, this is so, so fun. Good. Um, whenever we uh, sign, sign off, we don't say goodbye. We say happy trails. Okay. So you ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll see you guys next time. Happy, happy trails. trails.